In the second half of 1981, somewhere in the commune of Montfermeil in the eastern suburbs of Paris, a 15-year-old boy named Eric Caen was working on a conversion of Nintendo's Game & Watch title Octopus for his Commodore pet. He didn't know it yet, but Eric had become a true bedroom coder. The conversion was completely programmed in 6502 Assembler. His passion for coding was insatiable, and by 1982 he had made his own version of the Sega classic, Pengo, for the wildly popular Oric 1 computer, his favourite machine at the time. His love for video games completely took over his life. He programmed whenever he could, but his schoolwork suffered. At the age of 19, and with the help of his brother Hervé in April of 1985, a company called EH Services was founded. EH Services would be a developer's company for hire. Right from the start, Gil Espech, an amazing Z80 coder, and Jean-Charles Melignac joined the team. The latter name may be better known in the ST community as M-Coder who would later be responsible for the fantastic conversion of Toki by Ocean France. One day, while visiting the offices of publishing company L'Oriciel, Eric met the programmer Alain Fernandez, who was presenting his own games, L'Ete Serechaud and Le Diamant de Chiops, for the Oric One computer. They both clicked, and a little later Alain, who would play an important role in this story, got hired by the Kahn brothers as well. For a while, EH Services programmed games for companies like Enfogram, Loriciel, Activision, Thompson and others, and their educational titles Apprends-moi Écrit and Des Signes dans l'espace for famous French publisher Nathan sold well. But something was missing, and the ambitious brothers just wanted more. A few months later that year, they decided to start their own publishing company. At the age of three, Eric always watched a television series called Titus Le Petit Lion, and because of this show, his grandparents started calling him Titus, and it literally turned into his nickname. Eric thought it'd be fitting for their new endeavour, and so Titus Interactive was born. Olivier Corviol a local friend and graphic designer was asked to create a logo. When he heard the company name, he immediately thought of a fox, a clever and cunning animal, and in a few days he had drawn a rudimentary logo in black ink. Eric added the red colour as he wanted something to catch the eye, but a nice logo was not enough. For the company to grow quickly, a solid portfolio needed to be developed. The company had the ambition to produce as many games as possible in as little time as possible. It was quantity over quality. To Jean-Charles Melignac's dismay, who would eventually leave the company after only two and a half years. But their strategy did work. The first product developed by EH Services under the helm of Titus was The One by Gil Espech. Games like Erebus, Magic and Balthazar would follow suit. Titus developed for the Amstrad CPC first, as this was the most popular home computer in France, with already over 200,000 units sold by 1986. Conversions to the Spectrum and Sega console would follow. Titus also wanted to cash in on the success of the arcade scene, so they released their Classique series, featuring mediocre clones of games like Pac-Man, Breakout, Space Invaders and many more. But Eric Caen had always envisioned Titus to be an international company. He had his eye on the American market, but how was he going to do it? Titus's breakthrough success originates somewhere in 1987, with the release of a first game in a well-known franchise. A trilogy that had a rocky start, as in true Titus tradition, but by the third game ended up being the finest in its genre. The international fame started at the beginning of the 16-bit era. So buckle up, because this is the complete history of the Crazy Cars series. Eric 
Eric Kahn was never a fan of the Z80 processor, he just didn't like programming the ZX Spectrum or the Amstrad. His favourite 8-bit machines were the Oric 1 and the C64. Programming the 65 range of processors was his thing, but by the end of 1986 this was about to change. Titus wanted to expand its horizons, and Eric was looking at how Commodore was performing in the USA. Titus were amongst the very first to acquire an Amiga in France, but creating games for the 16-bit machines wasn't without risk, as the user base was still small and the price for developing a game was high. Yet Eric wanted to jump the gun. At the same time, some of the Titus guys got hooked on a new release by Sega at the arcades. The game was Outrun, and they loved it. So Eric decided that their next title would be a racing game, and for the first time, it was going to be created on a 16-bit machine, the almighty Commodore Amiga. In Crazy Cars, as the game was called, you would race the open road for a limited amount of time just like in Outrun. But you could pick several exotic cars, like a Lamborghini Countach or a Ferrari GTO. You had to travel through six different regions, from the deserts of Arizona to the beaches of Malibu. It took Eric five months to develop the game, completely programmed in C. Olivier Corviol did all the graphics using deluxe paint. Some of them, like the 32 colour intro screen, were first digitised using an in-house system before being treated in the famous Amiga paint package. The impressive digitised intro tune, which only lasted 10 seconds, and the game over music were both composed in a studio by professional musicians. The in-game engine noise and skid sound effects were digital recreations from videotapes of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Crazy Cars was fairly well received on the Amiga when it was released, mainly because it was one of the first games in its genre for the system. People weren't used to seeing these impressive intro screens and the music was really something else, especially compared to the beeps and boops of prior 8-bit games. And because the conversion of Outrun by US Gold for the home market left a lot to be desired, the road was wide open for clones created by more talented programmers. Gameplay-wise, Crazy Cars was criticised for being a bit too easy, even boring. And the bumps in the road that levitated the car was just weird. The Amiga version also had some raster glitches on the sides of the screen. The impressive box artwork featuring all the cars of the game was designed and drawn by Corviol, who also did the advertisements. When the Amiga version was completed, Eric wanted the game to be converted to as many systems as possible, in a very limited amount of time, to the dismay of some of the programmers. Alain Fernandez did the Atari ST version. Compared to the Amiga game, all display and input-output functions were coded in 68K assembler, taking up 98% of CPU time. He also created 3D polygons. 11 polygons were used to display the road in the game. The SD version only used 16 colours on screen compared to the Amiga's 32, which was mostly apparent in the intro screen and the lack of gradient sky in the game. However, because the game was converted using Assembler, it actually ran a bit faster. The engine sounds were just awful, and Alain once said they were recordings of the Citroen 2CV with a pierced exhaust of a fellow programmer Eric Zmiro. He would later do the PC conversion of Crazy Cars. Worth mentioning is the fantastic Amstrad CPC version by Gil Espech, completely programmed in Z80 Assembler. Gil had created a fake 3D drawing algorithm for the game. The rendering code did not draw the whole screen, only the parts that were necessary, making it fast and smooth. He wanted the game experience to rival that of the original Amiga game. This code would be optimised and used in later CPC conversions of Fire and Forget Offshore Warrior and Crazy Cars 2. Finally, the Commodore 64 version was done by Jean-Charles Marigna. This was the worst version of the pack, looking different with smaller cars and weird gameplay, 
Melignac only had one month to do the conversion and the game contained bugs. But the management at Titus did not care as they were focusing on releasing it as soon as possible in the USA to Jean Charles' frustration. The release of Crazy Cars was a turning point for Titus. It was the first game for the company to be exported internationally. It sold over 250,000 copies and was converted to a vast number of systems. Alain Fernandez even coded a version for the Atari 2600, which never saw the light of day. The game was also included in the Amiga Starters Kit in Europe in 1989 and a year later in Australia. The revenue it generated allowed Titus to move into larger premises and hire new talent. It gave them a total creative freedom in their future projects. New releases would soon follow. The assembler engine of Crazy Cars was optimised and the next batch of games were programmed on the ST first. In 1988, Alain Fernandez coded Fire and Forget, a frantic action shooter racing game, and Galactic Conqueror, an impressive space shoot 'em up sim with serious Galaxy Force vibes to it. The graphics to both games were again created by Olivier Corviol, the last games he would work on. Offshore Warrior was another action racer, basically crazy cars on water. But a year later, in 1989, a very special game was released, created by a talented new programmer. This technical achievement was called Titan, a cross between a game of Pong and classic Arkanoid with silky smooth multi-directional scrolling on the ST. And this coder would play a key role in the development to the follow-up of the game that turned Titus into a company stretching far across the pond. Thank <laughs> you.